This is Phil Chandler and today we're going to be talking about bananas. Now I've always been told that uh, bees don't like the smell of bananas or at least they respond to the smell of bananas in a way that is shall we say not very helpful to beekeepers. The perceived problem here is that the alarm pheromone that bees give off when they sting, so it's part of their sting chemistry if you like, uh, mimics the smell of bananas or at least uh, resembles to some extent the smell of bananas. So uh, today we have some bananas and we're going to test this theory. Just under here we've got a feeder this is, and I'm just going to take the top carefully off the feeder. Now here's the bees. Now this feeder is um, on top of a polynuke here which you can see and there's uh, a good colony of bees in there. They're reasonably gentle bees and as you can see I've modified this polynuke to have a hole. Here's a hole um, in this side of the feeder. This is for, so that I can feed um, uh, fondant uh, and, and relatively solid matter and this side there's no hole so I can feed liquid this side. Now the bees have access to both sides in the usual way underneath that central clear divider. I wanted to get hold of some overripe bananas because they are supposed to have virtually no starch in them but a lot of sugar so I couldn't do that but this one's sort of slightly overripe in, in one place at the end there. So I'm just going to give them the whole banana. I'm also going to give them the peel. Now here's some peel. What do you make of this? So what I'm interested in here is whether the bees sort of leap onto this banana. I'm just going to put the rest of the peel over the side, I think. There's no bees in there at the moment. So they've got banana to, to look at and they're, they're... There's a couple of bees coming out to take a look, take a smell. Um, there's a bee yeah, well I wouldn't say they're exactly leaping on it they're, they're, they're kind of sniffing it a bit and wondering what the heck it is I suppose. Uh, perhaps I should break it up a little bit more maybe that would better sort of expose it expose it to um, more surface area to bees and I'm going to show them that, um, that overripe bit which might just tempt them a little bit further. I'll see. Right. So. so what are you going to do? Okay so there's, there's a bee definitely taking a bit of an interest and um, Yeah, there's several bees that are definitely going for the the riper part of the banana. They they can definitely tell there's there's sugar there. Now, of course, there's there's more to bananas than just sugar, and they do. Uh, it, it's said that they are a good source of potassium, for example, um, and um, this is one of the elements that bees do need, as, as, as do we all, and it would be interesting to see, I mean I'm sure the bees don't go, oh look, potassium, um, or even, oh look, banana, but I can say with some confidence that what is not happening uh, is that the bees are not going crazy, and uh, they're not responding in the way that uh, everybody says, oh, you know, don't eat bananas near bees because they get stingy. Um, because it smells like their alarm pheromone. doesn't seem to be happening. That, that, that I can be quite uh, confident in saying. And there are bees now definitely sniffing around at the skin. Um, they're, they're certainly interested in this banana. I can, I can say that for sure. They're, 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 they're more than interested. They're, they're eating it. Now, how long it would take them to get through a banana, who knows? But I guess it's going to be um, an interesting alternative to, sh to, to just plain old sugar for them. I mean, it's got 
you know, more kind of flavour to it than, than sugar. So maybe that's what they've been hoping for all these years, you know, a nice, nice juicy banana to be plonked into their hive. Because, uh, let's face it, it's not something they kind of come across in the wild very much in this country, in England. So, um, experiment number one, banana experiment number one, seems to be producing uh, an interesting result in, the, in that they are definitely eating the banana and they're, they're very much interested in the the riper part of it I would say that seems to be what they're mostly going for uh, which, which supports the idea that um, as bananas ripen the sugar content increases and the starch content diminishes to virtually to zero I believe so there we are bees eating bananas who'd have thought Okay, so I'm going to leave that aside for a moment and I'm going to try another experiment with a different hive. So here's another colony and we're going to see how they respond to banana. This one I've got here, this banana is not as ripe as the other one. Um, so maybe not, hasn't got quite the, the, uh, the taste test appeal, should we say? I don't know, we'll see. What I'm going to do is sort of, this time, oh, oh hello, there's a bull coming into the apiary. I just, uh, Maybe you need to just close the gate. No, out! Oh, hut, 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 hut! Go on! Shh, shh, out! Out! Please, come on, come on! Shh, back off! Yes. Yeah, that's actually a bull. Um, can you just please back up a bit? Thank you. Thank you. Ah, uh, yeah. Hello, ladies. How are you? I'm just going to close the car door so they don't destroy it. Yeah, I can see you're having a great day, so... Um, I don't want you in the apiary though because you're kind of big and heavy and you may well do quite a lot of damage so <clears throat> let's just close the gate shall we yeah okay so the cows are now peacefully grazing we can go back to our bananas um so, here we go. Um, here's this little colony. And I, what I'm going to do here is just uh, mash up this banana a little bit because it's not quite as ripe as the other one. And, um, well, you can see already they're kind of interested. They're going, ha. Huh. This isn't sugar as we know it, but we're going to eat it anyway. So I'm, I'm, all I'm doing is just kind of breaking this banana up. I'm not, I'm not kind of making any great effort to, to mulch it in any way, but, well, you know, m mince it up or whatever expression you want to use. I'm going to put the peel on the other side of the feeder this time, just, just for the fun of it. Um, Right, so, what's happening? Yeah, we've definitely got some interest there. They're having a good sniff. And, um, I would say, yeah, these, these girls are... are certainly interested in the idea of bananas being edible. Um, obviously this, this won't be something they've ever come across before, this is a completely novel food to them, but I guess they recognise the fact that sh it has sugar, uh, uh, the bees must be, able to, um, must be able to taste sugar in some way or, or, or detect the sugar content of a substance, I imagine. Because let's face it, that's what they do, isn't it? Bees' lives depend on their ability to detect the sugar content of nectar. So this is something we can assume they must be good at. And the bees coming down from the tunnel here as well to, to check it out. They're not, I wouldn't say they're going crazy over it. It's not like they're leaping on it like they do on fondant, for example. But 
you know, there, there, there's definitely a strong interest in that. So I'm just going to go back to the first colony. I'm put that, just put that cover on to keep the heat in a bit. Go back to this other colony over here. See how they're getting on. So, yep, there's a good crowd gathering here. Words getting around that there's something uh, new and juicy and interesting has appeared in the feeder from from this. Uh, the, the god that, that, that looks, looks after them. I, I guess they think of me as, if they think of me at all, they think of me as some kind of god, I suppose. I mean, who knows? They're much less interested in the peel. Oh, having said that, there's, no, there's, there's a bee just jumped onto the peel, but he's going for the, he's going for the uh, ripe bit of banana. That, that's the bit that really interests them. I mean, that will obviously ripen of its own accord very rapidly over the next few days, so and I guess they'll, they'll chew their way through it. We'll have to come back and have a look. Put that cover back on. Okay, so that's, that's two little experiments. Um, what else can we do here? There's, uh, there's a quadratic hive over here. There's two, in fact, side by side. And... There's a feeder in the top here, and as you can see there's bees just kind of hanging around, hoping that something might appear that's edible, and so we're going to give them a banana. Here's another banana. Again, this one's not as ripe as the first one, but it's, it's, it's not bad. And as if the old if the old theory about bananas and bees was true, of course, by now I would have been attacked by a bunch of bees, but I haven't been. So there you go. Bang goes another theory. Bananas seem to be pretty safe around bees. I've got banana smell all over my hands and that doesn't seem to be attracting anybody's attention right now. So again, a bunch of bees are coming out to have a look and a smell to see what's being presented to them. And it looks very much like we're getting a, a similar response to, we do, uh, to, to, to the other two hives. They seem to be tucking in with some alacrity. So, there we go. It's another another successful banana feed, I think. So, we'll close that one up. And just for the sake of um, uh, fairness and balance, we'll give some to this this hive here too. I'm standing right in front of their entrance, which isn't the preferred option. Um, this this colony um, has been pretty much okay over the summer. It has. I have had a. Having said that, I've just got stung on the upper lip <laughs> by a bee. So maybe this isn't altogether. Uh, crazy story about bananas uh, but I, I have had I know I have been stung um, th this this particular colony is, is not the uh, how should we say the, the least defensive I have they're not bad but you know, they're, they're, they're a bit um, they can be a bit scruffy and they're living up to their reputation right now I'm just kind of dodging a few that are in the air well they're on the banana for sure, they're, they're, they're definitely um, just got another one on the side of the head. So I'm just going to back off a little bit and just let the camera run. So I've just uh, put a veil on, which I probably should have done to start with, of course. Um, the, these bees are definitely a little bit um, 
stroppier than, than average in this apiary. But I'm not bad, but you know. I've had two stings off them just now. And there's there's you can probably hear in the camera's mic there's a, there's a couple in the air that, that would sting me if they could get to me. But again quite a lot of interest in the bananas. They definitely recognise it as potential food. And although I haven't kind of mashed this up as much, um, they're, they're going for the they're going more for the kind of exposed, slightly crushed parts of the banana, which I guess are just as easy to get sugar out of. Okay, so there's a few in the air now, so I'm just going to find the, the lid and close that up. <coughs> Cows are having a fine old time in that uh, field next door. Let's go back to the original colony again and have a quick peek. There's a little bit of condensation forming on there, that's interesting. So obviously there's a higher water content. Uh, uh, well, what can we say? They're, they're at it, you know, they're, they're, they, are, they are chewing at it, but not in any, I wouldn't say with any great enthusiasm. Um, maybe maybe this will improve as the as the banana ripens or, or, or slightly I suppose slightly decomposes, isn't it? As it as it ripens, the uh, the sugar content takes over. Yeah, they're not they're not desperately excited by it, but you know they they are eating it. So we we'll go back to number two. Here's colony number two. How are they finding their banana snack? Okay, well, again, it's like it's not like they're they're, they're crowding out of the entrance, uh, out of the uh, the access hole, and uh, piling into it. But the, you know, they they are definitely nibbling at it. The ones that are out here are definitely eating the banana. Over here, nobody's interested in the peel at the moment. Uh, maybe it takes a while for that to become tastier. Maybe it matures. Okay, so we've got uh, three, or was it four? It's four little, little experiments going on. Um, and we've got uh, two bananas left. Uh, this one is the better of the two, I would say. So uh, I can either feed that to the bull, who's, who's taken quite a strong interest in in what's going on. All right, chap. Hello. Do you like banana? Hmm. Not really. I think it's more interested in grass. Yeah, grass. Okay, not my car. Anyway, so back to bees. For reasons of, of entirely of their own, um, and I've never fathomed out why this might be, this little colony has always had a little cluster of bees over in that far corner. And they've been there, obviously not the same bees, but I mean there's been a cluster of bees there for quite some time, right through the summer actually, um, that they seem to have preferred to gather over here. So I'm just going to give them a little, a little banana snack and see how they take to that. These bees are pretty gentle, they're, 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 they're probably my most productive colony actually. They produced, um, they had five supers on them over the summer and filled them all. Uh, national supers that is. So, what do they think about banana? <laughs> yeah, there's definitely some showing an interest, there's some having a nibble. And uh, fig trying to figure out what this new as as yet unknown substance might be i suppose uh, you know but you, you, we have to uh, imagine that, that that these bees will obviously never have come across uh, at least it, it's highly unlikely that they will have ever come across bananas during their day-to-day -day activities and the bees we're looking at now obviously will only have been 
um, active outside the hive for um, you know maybe one to one to three weeks, and so it's it's very unlikely that you know unless one of the one of the neighbours and there aren't any actually any very close neighbours here. It's it's a quarter of a mile flight to the nearest neighbour really. Um, unless anybody has you know left a ripe banana outside for some reason, um, it's very unlikely they will smelt this smell before at least in the form of a fruit they may have smelt it as a or something like it as an alarm pheromone so so they may have you know detected um, a, a, um, a potential threat and, and use their own um, uh, sting pheromone as it were to 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 respond to it and therefore they would have smelt something like this in, in which case it wouldn't be a, a totally unfamiliar smell but then it's not a smell that they would associate with food, but they must have some mechanism, some internal sense of what is food and what isn't food, because otherwise, clearly, that would be a. Um, they wouldn't have survived this long if they weren't able to do, uh, able to, to tell food from non-food. So, despite the fact that this smells nothing like any food that they've ever tasted, they are still able to discern that it contains something of value to them, we assume, and are therefore tucking into it. So what can we deduce from this? Well, I honestly don't know. We can say, yeah, bees to some extent, um, as far as we can tell from these very quick and, and, and dirty tests, we can say, yes, bees will eat banana. Now, the story goes that, that as, as the banana ripens, it, it, um, it, 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 it its sugar content increases and the starch content reduces to zero. So that would make it an ideal food in many ways for bees because obviously they are um, they derive their energy from carbohydrate from sugar, and the the sugars that are in bananas are actually quite suitable for them. Uh, there's no toxic sugars. Uh, some there are some sugars that are toxic to bees. Uh, it, it's true. Uh, that, but they're not present in bananas, so we can say that potentially ripe bananas might be good food for bees. Um, there is research that suggests that this may be the case, and uh, there is a suggestion that they actually thrive on banana, and that uh, it increases their brood production and may have other health benefits, including you know extra minerals and um, vitamins maybe. So there you go. It's an alternative for, uh, for, for, for feeding possibly. I mean of course in, in winter when you can't give bees liquid food then uh, it may be that ripe bananas which, which are generally reasonably cheap actually and you can, you can often buy overripe bananas at knockdown prices especially from markets um, and probably cheaper than sugar weight for weight I would say. Um, so maybe this is a this is an answer for winter feeding. You know, maybe we should be feeding bunches of bananas to our bees in winter rather than fondant. Interesting idea. another experiment we should do while we're here is to see is do cows like banana that's, that's that's a question I'm sure that must be on everybody's mind because we have the opportunity to do a do an experiment which has possibly not been performed before in um, guys who wants to try a banana there's a bull there that might be no he's not at all interested Bananas, anybody? Anybody like a banana? Uh, I, I, I think this experiment is not going to produce a, a useful result.